I can't do that, bro. <laughs> I've tried. It's 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 horrible. Is it delayed or no? It's not delayed. No, it's it's instant if I feedback if I want it, but I I can't I because I can't control the volume independently of the of the uh monitor feedback, it's I'm gonna hear me at the same volume I hear you, which is obviously different. All right, Maddie, welcome back to the Ask Maddie show. Maddie, how are you doing? Hey, I'm doing all right. We're uh, we're back in the thick of it. Markets are looking hot, so I'm feeling hot, ready to talk about crypto and answer you guys' questions today. Team, we have a lot of great questions today, and we're going to be focusing a lot on the charts here, which is very exciting for Maddie here, being a technical analyst, looking at cryptos like Velo, looking at cryptos like SHX, looking at cryptos like Sui Coin. So these are your guys' picks. We're going to go to the charts. Maddie is going to give his thoughts. And we did preview this before the show. We don't usually ever do that, but sometimes you guys bring up the worst cryptos of all time. Like You guys bring up <laughs> cryptos that just got launched, and it's like, how how is one to chart that you know so we don't want to do that we look through them and maddie's was actually sharing with me like hey he sees some good buying opportunity right now so we're going to go through that and um we are also going to be talking about casper you guys had some thoughts on our after our show yesterday or two days ago about you know some of the things we brought about casper shopping and sort of those things and so you guys have response to that as well i was talking about when will the crypto market take off this is the ask maddie show and before we get deep into the content here team make sure you become a crypto charge member we are from crypto charge maddie is a technical analyst but he is also putting on for the crypto charge live show about three times a week and then dan and brian also do the show as well we also have tools on the platform we have uh the community feature you know go to the left side of the page it says community will take you to the discord where you have access to talk with the rest of the community we are from i don't know when i started i was like 20 years old i think i was the youngest in there when we started and maddie it goes up to like what's the oldest person we have in there we, we actually have folks who are all the way up into their like late 60s early 70s in our group and uh we've got members that are just fresh out of college as well so you know our, our spectrum is pretty wide and uh you know we're, we're really just looking for individuals that want to take a, a serious approach to their education and uh you know that that doesn't have an age a lot of the time you just have the right caliber of individual and uh you know we, we all mesh well together and there a lot of respect and a lot of education goes around there you go, team. So no excuse for you not to be in there. You can't be too young. You can't be too old. If you're in your 20s and 30s, you should definitely be in there because there's a lot to learn in there. I have myself has have grown a lot in there with people that are just joining the community that come from different walks of life. And it's just a great community. If you're not in a community period, you need to be in one. And if we're talking about crypto, crypto charge is where it's at. So join us there. The link will be in the pinned link down below this video. But let's get into the content here, Maddie. Uh, a lot to talk about here. So let's get into it. Are you ready? I'm ready. Henry Cox Zero says, when is it most likely the crypto market will take off? Uh, let me check my calendar really quick here. Um, no. So I, I, I try to use as many like, you know, technical clues as I can of like, you know, are we ready? Now, can I tell you what day, what time we're going to get the exact candle that prints in the, in the you know targets that we're looking for? No, I can't. But we always look at the charts every day. A lot of the, my team is very familiar with the 12 hour daily and three day charts. We are generally a lot more macro focused um, when we look at the charts and it helps people especially kind of see the bigger picture, not to get lost in the minutia of the everyday stuff. Um, you know, most investors are, are you know, mid to long-term investors, I would say. Um, so we want to use charts that reflect that, not to say that we won't evaluate structures on you know, a four-hour frame or a one-hour frame or 15-minute frame when it calls for it, but uh, we try to look at the, the larger time frames Now, um, I, I already said to Gav, this is probably just going to be a very chart-heavy show. Um, so we're actually going to take a look at the Bitcoin chart. And I always look at Bitcoin as like one of the leading indicators of like, you know, how are we doing crypto market-wise? Now, of course, we know that there's you know the, the shift in dominance that will determine when all coins take off. We're seeing a very big disconnect right now in the equity markets. Equity markets are behaving a lot differently than the crypto markets are right now. We're seeing a decline in the dollar, which is generally good for risk on assets. Now, what does that mean for the American economy over the next year or two? You know, it might not be necessarily net positive thing in relation to inflation and spending power, but in relation to our risk on assets, it can be a very positive thing. Now, when we take a look here at the Bitcoin chart, this is something that we've been evaluating over the last, whatever it is, 85, 90 days or so that we've been in this range. And now that we developed the range and we've shown that there's a lot of resiliency here on Bitcoin, today's move isn't 
just exciting because we're up three percent it's because we're seeing confirmation on top of confirmation on top of confirmation of strength of breakouts of classic consolidation re reconsolidation and breakout structure so i'm going to go over those few things that i spotted here on the charts uh you know with the team uh that we've been calling out that we've been waiting to see more of one of the things we're gonna do is to turn on the lights here with the moving averages we got these shorter term ma's here that we've been interacting with so we have an illustrated in green the 50-day moving average and then in blue we have the 100-day moving average those are kind of my short to midterm but definitely more on the short side moving averages that i look for short-term momentum shifts so we can see over here in april mid-april we broke below that 50 day started using as a ceiling of resistance however when we interacted with that 100 day we started to turn it into a floor of support we started using it uh as you know a momentum indicator to the upside so that was indicator number one that we were reclaiming those and we started to see some resiliency and some buyer demand stepping off of that the other thing that we had here was a very clearly and well-defined range so when we look at some of the areas of interest here that were really held up with quite some you know dignity and respect in here we've got top of range here as well and we got top of range and then we also have our pivot zone in here so this is how a, a range is evaluated guys from a technical analysis perspective especially when you start to have like longer pieces of price action where's top of range where's bottom of range and where's the pivot zone if you can identify those three things you're already giving yourself a huge leg up with just identifying the opportunities right if we break over the pivot zone then we're probably looking towards top of range you can even play intra range plays if you want to and, and make money that way but let's get back to the evaluation here so when we look at kind of the uh, 59 to 61 k region here strong support Support. look at all the wicks in here showing that there was strong buyer demand one two three four five six you know a little break in deviancy here this is a great example of market makers wiping out anyone who was heavily leveraged long here this type of move taking us down to 56k very briefly and then recovering is the perfect kind of move to make sure you wipe everyone out take out all their stop losses and the resume trend but we can see here we also just continue to you know respect the 60k zone as strong support big impulses here big reclaiming of the pivot zone look at this multiple tests on the pivot zone one two three tests of the pivot zone after reclaiming that's huge in itself there we also have other patterns that were within this range here giving us additional confirmation so this is one of the things i talk about with technical analysis people go what's what's your favorite indicator what indicator can i run right like it's not just about one indicator it's how many clues can i put in you know in my probabilities uh that tell us that this is most likely continuing upwards right and the more we have of those the better we can feel about our analysis so we also have something called an inverse head and shoulder structure here so that's comprised of a left shoulder ahead and a right shoulder this neckline here is technically the pivot zone big break over that and then a back test over that pivot zone so that was a big confirmation and then final little piece here that we were paying attention to the last few days was this just classic oops, classic flagging and uh, compression structure in here after breaking over it back testing here and look at that clean breakout and follow through looks very very nice so these were a lot of the clues that we look in here what, one last thing we're going to look at is i'm going to strip all this away we're just going to throw our classic retrace tool on here so we're going to go swing high swing low in here also look at the respect that we had in here so as we broke up through these zones here look at that 618 multiple tests of support in here breaking over that 786 here so i think that bitcoin is ready to make its next move towards like the 84 85k range what does that mean for alts look historically guys generally when you see that big move and then you see a drop in dominance altcoins look very very juicy right now um i did a really really big uh, review yesterday uh on our show or on monday's show uh of a lot of the alts that i saw had really great opportunities that are prime that are showing the same moves that bitcoin showing but it hasn't made that big impulsive move yet um so there's a lot of opportunity to jump on stuff right now guys right like don't wait several weeks for the start playing out to be up two three x and be like now i'm going to get involved in the market there's a lot of positioning right now that you could put yourself in to make some very excellent trades over the coming months all right, Maddie. So you pre uh, preface this, but I'm just gonna preface it one more time, team. Maddie's about to go into cryptos that he knows a little bit about, a little bit of fundamentals. But I can tell you right now, these are cryptos that neither of us have ever bought. So, right. Maddie, I know you're about to give that technical review. This is very akin to technical tune-up Friday that we do on the website. Right. A bunch of people drop their tickers for Maddie, and Maddie charts all of them. I think Maddie did like was like 40 or something ridiculous last week. Yeah, usually about 35 to 40 is kind of like our, our general Friday. So the Friday show is a little longer. It's a little over an hour on average, but I don't I don't omit anybody's picks no matter how I feel about them. I'm here for you guys and your education. So bring your tickers. It's a great exercise. You guys get 30 days free with crypto charge uh, when you sign up with codes YouTube. So opportunity for you to get in there, get your cryptos charted even for 30 days and decide if it's for you or not. So here you go, team. You're going to get a little mini version of that. Nicola says, do you guys have any updates on Velo? Is this project worth investing? 
Yeah, so we'll go ahead and just focus on the technicals today. Make sure you guys all do, always do your own research. We don't offer financial advice here on YouTube or at CryptoCharge.com, um, but we do give you guys our insights and you know our opinions, and you guys can, of course, make educated decisions based on uh, your own research in conjunction with that analysis. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at Velo here. We're going to pull up the Velo chart. And again, guys, if you are new to charting, what you want to do is you want to look to see where you find the most price history. If you see here on the side where it says crypto and then it has a little trading view logo, that's generally nine out of 10 times going to be the most price history you can get because it's going to be an aggregated price history across all available exchanges providing API feeds to uh, TradingView. So let's go ahead and actually erase everything off this chart because I have done a, a bit of analysis on this for uh, one of our teammates in the past. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at what's happened here. So first of all, again, a great example of just bad timing with the market, right? Launching at kind of the end of the end of the bull market here, seeing almost you know a full 100% depreciation here, moving from the scam wick up here at $3.20 to a fraction of a penny. That's a really, really nasty sell-off, right? Right? Um, and this really kills sentiment. But we saw, you know, uh, Moon River look like this, Blacktopia look like this. There's a lot of assets that have had just this unfortunate timing mixed with maybe, you know, not the right marketing team. You know, there's a lot of circumstances that occur. But let's get back to the technical uh, analysis here. So what we want to do is we want to see if we can find a, uh, any areas of major support or resistance. So first one's going to be right here. We also have a little bit right here. And then we've got this right here. And we kind of have a couple other areas of interest in here they start to become more sparse because we just had such relentless downtrend when you do have that relentless downtrend it does make it more difficult towards your upper targets to find you know where you might find that you know area of support or resistance we can always tie a fib back in later to that to kind of help us give some of those indicators but let's focus on the areas that we actually do have some price action and we started to define a bottom in here um, built a bottom here in, in uh, late 2022 end of 2022 started to get a little bit of resiliency in here right so after that 2022 bottom get a nice 14x move so that's actually a pretty significant move especially you know us being here in march of 23 uh when really things hadn't really fully turned around yet now one of the things that i do like that we saw in this project after this big bottom in here after a big 14x recovery you got a full back test and this is really the bread and butter of what you want to see with a rebalance chart so a lot of people look at this decline and they get very upset and frustrated you know, this was a pretty decent pullback here. this was minus 83 percent but what we're really doing here is we're back testing this new floor of support we're showing that this floor of support actually means something multiple tests here so after we come back even if we ignore test number one here one two three confirmations that this floor actually means something to the market so the 0 0.002 mark mean something to the market now, right? Uh, we break higher here. And now after we've broken over this previous top here that was developed in 2023, coming back to build a floor of support here. So I'd like to see us maybe come back a little bit more. I'd probably be a little bit of a greedy goblin here and wait for two or three pennies a little bit lower. But overall, what you're doing is doing breakout back tests in a very uh, clean and classic series of higher highs and higher lows. We're also above all of our major moving averages, the 50 week, the 100 day and the 50 day contending with the 50 day right now, but really showing decent bounces every time we've interacted with these short-term amazing here so i would be looking for a move into one of these next areas of interest in here where i'd be looking towards maybe like 40 cents and then maybe 95 cents as those next two big tps right so if we we're getting in off 15 be looking at roughly 160 percent move or so to that 40 cent mark or upwards of like a 5x to that 95 cent mark so definitely asymmetric returns especially when you're doing the breakout back test last thing we would do here guys again if we wanted to potentially map out what that longer term plan would look like as we go swing high swing low i try not to use these scam wicks up here just because there's no volume that occurred i try to go where we had like decent candle closes in here we got this two three six all the way up there at 32 cents um so really not too bad excuse me i i said uh 92 cents and we were talking about fractions of pennies in here um but just move the zeros over guys you just know what i mean there uh but we would be looking at towards that two three six of like a 17 x or so if we were to clear that out now does do these charts have to do that do they have to reach out to every extension every time no they don't um but i always especially when i have opportunities where there's like clear pockets that haven't been cleared out i try to target those pockets and at least start to deal risk taking a quick 5x off the table is really not something that we should take for granted and we should try to roll if possible nele wants to see sui coin next maddie all right let's do it so we're going to go with sui usd again we're going to go off that crypto chart there we're going to go ahead and delete our previous fib that we've had on this chart and uh go ahead and do a little bit of technical analysis here so first of all 2023 pretty nasty sell-off really just unfortunate timing sucks it is what it is um c minus 78 percent is is never fun when your project first is launched but again it's not an indicator of strength just like with casper right like big sell-off but okay so we, we could see this this recovery any day now um when we look at some of the support and resistance that occurred in here right let's go ahead and look at that floor that was developed in there let's go ahead and mark up some of our recent support and uh resistance zones boom got this clear top in here and we also have kind of like a little bit of this 
pivot zone in here all right so that's our major stuff um when you guys are on these like larger charts like 12 hour daily three day try not to be too granular with like the tiny little pockets of support and resistance try to identify the macro ones you can always drill down to a smaller time frame and then add additional ones in um, but you want to be aware of like the macro levels those are the ones that really matter for targets you know larger entries things of that nature um so a few things that we can evaluate here so currently below the short term mma so 50 day and 100 day we are below those right now at a death crossover here in uh late april of this year we've seen a little bit of a decline since then so from the peak that we had in march of this year uh price did move down about 55 60 percent which is a good healthy pullback like when you look at fibonacci retraces you're looking like between like a 60 and 70 percent pullback is like a full retrace or like a decently deep retrace um so that's a, a very healthy amount to pull back especially after a big set of impulses like this we started printing the 50 week moving average here in mid-april we showed strong support off of it on april 13 as well as may 14 so basically a month apart two two different back tests off that 50 week holding there as uh, strong support. We also had a test here on January 22 of the dollar two mark, a uh, little wick below this, but closed the candle body here above on April 13. Um, again, small deviations here on March 14, but we're trying to build a floor here kind of between like the 90 and, and dollar region. So building a, a floor of support in there, if we were to see the market break down in an aggressive way and see some big correction, I'd be looking at the 68 to 70 cent region. And this is why you guys want to have these areas marked ahead of time so that you know, hey, I, I have this analysis, right? I think they were making a higher low. You know, I I'm, I'm happy with my position, but if I were to be a buyer and I were to add aggressively, where would I do that? Um, you don't have to wait for price to present itself. I already can tell you that we would get a strong bounce in the 70 cent region if we were to get a decline into that area because of how much uh, price interaction we've had in there previously. It's a strong area of support. So um, for me personally, um, I don't think this is a, a terrible buy. I think it meets most of my technical rules. We are back testing the breakout zone here. If we were to get a drop towards 70 cents, I would be definitely be a more aggressive buyer if it was me. Um, last thing we'll do here is we'll grab our FIB from the old cycle just to take a quick look here we did not reach that 1.618 from previous cycle yet so we actually just poked slightly above this previous high haven't reached that 250 mark i'm kind of settling into that 50 percent fib here that 382 was actually also that kind of lower, that double bottom occurred on top of that previous uh topping structure in here from december all the way through early january of this year before that big breakout so we've pulled back pretty decently in here we're holding some some okay levels uh and i'd be looking at like 250 as target one Maddie, so it's at the 50% Fibonacci right now. Usually under the 236 is where we're looking to buy DCA deep into the bear market at this point. You know, a lot of the altcoins like Sui right now are up. Would you ever, looking at it just from a technical perspective here, would you ever even consider buying Sui at these prices? I would I would probably want to be a little greedier and I'd probably want another test of like 85 as, as a shallow entry to get involved here. But again, I also am going to consider the the size of the pullback that we've had from the high that was made and that was deep as you know 60 percent and currently down still about 50 percent from the previous high so you know i'm looking for at least a half off discount from previous highs before i get involved i don't want to you know just jump in because there's a lot of hype these are the kinds of you know distributive structures that create reaccumulative structures that generally present decent technical opportunities now is it as asymmetrical as some of the other opportunities that we've looked at on the crypto charge live show no definitely not but is it structurally set up with a higher low to move higher yes i do think so yeah, and just to like jump deeper, like probably at the end of this, you guys are probably going to gather that like, hey, listen, like there's, there's nothing offered here that's different than some of the altcoins that we have been buying or like different in the sense like these altcoins are new. All right. So we're looking like last year this crypto was launched. Oh, wait. Yeah, last year this crypto was launched. Okay, and then we look at Velo, SHX. These cryptos that we're looking at are fairly new. We have fairly little price history compared to other cryptos we are looking at. I mean, Casper might show more price history than all three of these. But the point is, is that some of these cryptos here, I've taken off so much when you know you're probably now starting to you know get into a bag. Like if you're asking at this point, oh, what are your thoughts on Suicoi? You know, should I be buying right now? It's like probably not a good time to be buying. You should have realized you're able to look back to last year where it's like, oh, this is like the most optimal buying opportunity. So we might, Maddie might at the, I might ask you, Maddie, hey, maybe show some other opportunities besides these. I know we're gonna get some good opportunities here, but maybe you know we'll get to that point where you get to, you guys call a shilling. We're gonna ask Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> go pull up the Casper chart, you know, whatever. Terabyte says, I would really love to hear Maddie's analysis of SHX. Thanks for the awesome show. Cool. Yeah. So we'll, we'll finish up our, our little TA uh, session here with uh, SHX. And uh, we're going to go ahead. We don't want the S on the end there. And uh, we're going to look for a price action. So we do not have the crypto chart here as, a, as an available aggregated uh, price history. So we've got Gate.io, 
Bittrex and Mexi. Sometimes I do favor certain marketplaces because they are a little bit more liquid and have more volume that's done on them, but we still wanna to try to hunt down as much price history as possible. So we're gonna check Gate.io first. We're gonna see how far they go back, pretty decently far back. So September of 22, let's also check uh, Bittrex. Yeah. Let's um, see, what do we have here? We've got November of uh, of 21. So we've got more here on, on the Bittrex. Now, what does this say hip here? Is this halted? Let's what see. Happened? All trading activity on oh, Global Bitrix is disabled, so yeah, Bitrix we can't we can't use that chart. That's not going to help us at all. Uh, and then we have Mexi as very very little price history. So Gate.io is going to going to be our winner here. So again, that's part of your technical analysis, guys, is finding the best chart to use as well, not just using the first chart that's in front of you. So um, pretty ugly price history from from the get go here. Um, look at that crazy scam wick that you had down here to like a fraction of a fraction of a penny. But we've had really, really big uh, appreciation here since we uh, kicked off in 2023. You know, a lot of uh, assets started breaking out in October of last year. Um, off the bat, guys, it's already too lofty for me. Uh, you know, when I see charts like this and th there could be great fundamentals and I might miss out on the ne next leg, off the bat, there is not enough of a rebalancing in here for me. Uh, you know, if I were to look at uh, the other two opportunities we just looked at, exponentially better rebalancing, you know, sitting on some sort of higher low and a support level. Uh, whereas this chart, and this is kind of my beef with some of the meme coins too, is that they don't do the proper back test until a lot later. Uh, and you end up just chasing, you're kind of flying blind. Um, so we have a few examples here of kind of some consolidation, but not really a lot. So you had all of this resistance that was built September 21, again, January 23, and a little bit of a pivot zone in here as well. So lower bound was, you know, in this region, which also didn't get a back test. So you, in December, you get this breakout. We didn't back test this level. We did not back test this level. We finally start doing a little bit of consolidation all the way up here at 0 0.001. So we march from our breakout zone up about 290%, almost 300%. We do a little 40% pullback, but without actually rebalancing the chart and then just kick up into new impulses here. Um, this little consolidation here didn't backtest this previous high. Um, this is the longest and probably healthiest consolidation that we've had on this chart since breakout. Um, so you do have like a little bit of a flagging structure in here, classic flag. You're building a little bit of a floor of support here on top of that previous high. So that's healthy. And, you know, if you're good and say that you, you know, you want that shallow pullback for me, when I see all of this kind of price history that just doesn't leave any sort of reasonable rebalancing, um, it's automatically a no buy for me. And some people are like, but you don't know about this project and, you know, the, the everything they're doing. It's like I still have to have this combination of the technical setup with the fundamentals. There are so many good fundamental projects out there right now that I won't get invested in because of the technical setup. So it's not that I'm closed minded or I only want to get involved in my picks. I've opened up plenty of swing trades and, and things that you know I'm going to only be holding short term because the technical setup is good there. Last thing we're going to look at is the inverse fib here. So one of the things we can do for retraces is you know you guys always see me go swing high, swing low, especially when we're looking for targets. But if we were to go swing low, swing high, so kind of where we had the base of accumulation here to the breakout, this is what I'm talking about with a lack of rebalancing, right? Um, we really should have come a lot deeper, especially after making such a, a big impulse here, technically coming in off the 618 off of uh, off the low in here, but really just so much massive imbalance was left behind on this chart. So that automatically makes it a no buy for me. Now, it's not me telling you that, you know, you can't make money on this and that you can't use, you know, uh, these short term fibs to get targets. But again, make sure you guys are, are looking at what that looks like. You know, use the swing high, swing low here and don't be greedy start to scale out when you're in significant profit here so man i have a question for you so on that other shx chart on the bitrix uh platform it showed more price history and so if i was charting i probably would have charted on that one is that so is it if it's live on an exchange would you rather chart on that one or this one's halted on right. you know bitrix i believe went down or something happened Correct. with bitrix so it's not on there anymore would you rather chart on the one which showing you know the most recent price history or would you rather one showing the most price history over the length of the asset in a perfect world we would be able to overlay two pieces of price history and take aggregated price history from one and then you know lay it up against the current price action we can't really do much with with a, a chart that's halted right yeah, because we're not we're, we're not going to get anything more out of it you could also see towards the end before delisting there was just a lot of illiquidity candles that just started like slamming up and down as like market makers were trying to provide thin liquidity there um that's also a good sign that like the spreads were probably really really high so the trading was just like not very incentivized um so you really just can't do a whole lot with it now can you look at the previous highs at least if they don't register on the new chart and be like okay we did set a previous high at 15 cents you could technically 
technically t- draw a fib there, even if it's not d- not present on the chart and you know where the swing high is and, you know, line up the swing lows and you can potentially look at that target wise and see what happened. Sure. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not going to be a big help to you, especially if there's no active live trading happening on the exchange. Yeah, that's very tedious. Hopefully we can get a better chart going somewhere else. They need a crypto <laughs> chart on there. So, right. Maddie, we went through Velo. We went through Sui. We went through SHX. What do you think, just from a technical perspective, is the best buy out of all three of these? Yeah, I on a previous show, uh, not too long ago, I gave you guys Helium. I gave you guys a little bit of kind of the fundamental background on it. I gave you guys the technical setup on it. Um, one of the other uh, swing trades that I'm involved in right now that hasn't quite popped yet is Mana. That's going to be Decentraland in here. Um, you know, and I know that you know there's a lot of mixed opinions about uh, you know the the Meta projects and. You know, ones that are that ones that are focused kind of on uh, you know virtual reality and things of that nature. Um, but I'm looking at this primarily from a technical setup. Now, man, it's been around a while. Uh, there was a really nice back test that occurred on top of this previous high. Very big fan of that. So 2018 high in here comes back, uses it multiple times as a floor of support in here. Um, we're making a nice big inverse head and shoulders in here. We're contending with major MAs like the 50 week moving average and the 50 day. We've seen a lot of altcoins start to break over those and see significant moves higher. I think there's enormous potential here to even clear out some of this imbalance towards like the the 382 up here for like a 400 plus percent move um and if we were to make a new all-time high on man we could see over like a 20x opportunity here this from a technical perspective is probably one of the th- uh, the structures that i want you guys to look at now it's not so much that they all have to look like this and they all have to have this exact shape but what we're really experiencing here is you know a, a top that comes in very long and and very healthy extended uh you know correction and then after you break out into the next cycle you get a huge back test and reaccumulation on top of that previous top this is the best gift that any chart can possibly give you is when that reaccumulation is occurring on top of either a, uh, a previous top or another previous major resistance level that's now being turned into support so now that we've had basically three big opportunities we're on our third opportunity right now to basically buy the previous high as a new support level in here you're you're taking away most of the downside risk, right? Um, because you're already sitting on top of major support. So for me, uh, Mana is probably one of the, the better technical, short-term technical opportunities out there right now. Again, I can't tell you when and how everything pops off and you know the exact dates that we're gonna get to our targets. But um, this is a great example of one of the structures that I personally find very valuable and gives us a lot of those confirmations like we talked about at the top of today's session with Bitcoin, right? It's not just the FIB, it's not just the inverse head and shoulders, it's the accumulation of all of the indicators uh, that are giving us the signs that, hey, we're ready to move higher. We're in a, 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 as safe of a spot as we can to be to say bullishness is afoot yes maddie so helium and man as there are two cryptos you've been talking a lot about recently just to kind of put that closure though on the technicals that the team asks velo sui and shs uh some of those uh, i think sui and shx not really good buying opportunities so would you say velo would be the best buying technical opportunity out there what do you think yeah, so I brought Velo, Velo and, uh, you know, Sui is actually not terrible. I, you know, do I wish it was a little lower? Sure. But I think structurally we we have something kind of similar to what we're looking at here in relations to, to back test, breakout back test, which is always the, the main thing that I look for. Um, but yeah, I, I would say probably uh, Velo would probably be the, the one of the better technical buyers, you know, again. I don't haven't done any you know big fundamental research on those, so you guys need to make sure you understand what you're getting invested in. Um, but from a technical perspective, I, I'd say that Velo is probably you know primed you know uh, retrace wise and you know breakout back test wise uh, in a way that you're probably you know taking as much risk as you can off of the table. Pack says if anybody is or if anybody is reading this. Can you just smell the desperation of Casper? Now they are coking out with Casper spending card rewards. Holy crap, they are done. You sound like the one who's on the nose boogers, my guy. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, honestly, like I, you know, a lot of people will hop around to a lot of different projects, right? Like they bring like 40 or 50 picks on their, on their channel because they just want that like super wide approach. And they're going to tell you like, hey, here's the one or two that did really well. But like, they're not going to tell you about all of their losers, all of the the coins that they stopped investing in. Um, you know, a lot of them, you know, especially when you have like such small amounts of money invested in, you know, so many projects, uh, you're not going to be able to give that same attention to your larger positions. Um, so I'm still a big believer in Casper. The fundamentals have done nothing but improve uh, over time we have a big update that's coming to the network uh in these coming weeks here um you know and when we talk about the rewards we're just 
pointing ways for you guys to earn additional crypto that's not going to cost you any money. Like if you're already going to spend money on an Expedia trip or you're you know going to be going to a store that's supported, why would you not want to just earn additional crypto rewards with the money that you're earning? Like a, it's, it's just a tip, guys, right? You don't have to do it. I'm not going to earn anything if you guys use this or not. It's not going to affect Casper performance if you guys earn a little bit of Casper as cash back. We're just showing you guys, hey, if you're already going to be doing these things and you're already going to spend the money, might as well get something for free with it, right? Like it's it's a no brainer. So I don't know what your problem is, bro. I uh, think yeah. you need maybe a little bit of weed in your life and a little bit of love in your life, but uh, you know, figure it out, dude. We're, we're not here trying to shill stuff. We're just uh, trying to give people you know a little bit of education and uh, uh, hopefully make a little bit of money in the process. Yeah, Pax, this uh, comment is straight out of pocket with this. And when we talk about, I've shitted on plenty on cryptos that do stupid marketing things where they hire influencers to like and respond to a tweet. That is stupid funding or stupid money that's going outwards to get eyes on their project. And Casper keeps it very basic. And they actually are doing the Prove AI thing, which is going to be on the same level as the Watson governance they got with IBM going right now. So they're right. constantly building. Think about where Casper came from with building for enterprises and then they went into AI with their AI governance, track and trace. And it just seems like every couple of months we're hearing something new coming out of Casper. And you can see that roadmap broken down every single month on their Twitter account. So Casper is a project that is continuously developing. Maddie, we have the chart on Casper that is super deep in accumulation still, offering great buying opportunity. I don't want to hear any of this anymore, Maddie. I'm really fed up with all this nonsense. I've heard so many people try to give me what they what they think I should be doing with my money. Right. Screw you. Go somewhere else because I'm going to do what I want to do with my money, and this is what I do. I know so much about Casper. Maddie, you've been talking about Casper since, like, it, <laughs> it, since what was it, 2021? And yep. it's, my game plan is not changing here, guys. Our game plan isn't changing here. Maddie, I know you've brought up Helium, and you're talking about mana here. But our portfolio has been the same. It ain't changed. It's been redistributed. Right. But like, guys, like, if you don't like us talking about Casper, go somewhere else. We're not talking. When <laughs> Casper goes to zero, then we'll t stop talking about Casper, right, Matt? So. <laughs> yeah. No. It. Uh, you know. Again, guys. You know. Everyone likes to use the word shill, and don't get me wrong. There's a lot of people out there who don't have your best interest in heart. They are being compensated to to talk positively about those things. I promise you, I do not take any compensation from anybody. The only compensation I receive for the work that I do is for members who sign up and stick with our program. And that is it. And there's a very clear proposition value there. I tell you what I'm going to provide. I provide it regularly. They obviously are, are okay and happy with the price that they pay uh, for the service, but that is the only compensation I receive. And it's not that we haven't had the opportunity. We've had many exchanges, we've had many projects reach out to us offering us compensation, but there are contingencies with that compensation. And I'm not comfortable with, you know, uh, even jeopardizing a little bit the integrity of what we do here on the show with you guys. We always want to bring what we think is true and valid to you guys. We're telling you what we're doing, um, you know, and if you don't like the ideology, that's fine. But we're never here to shill. We're never here to take compensation from anybody. Um, our program is literally literally the only form of comp uh, compensation that we get uh, in relation to making this content for you guys. Absolutely, Matt. You said it. Uh, great. Matt, you provided a lot of value with the technicals today. Team, take that absorb at. Go on to TradingView yourself. This shouldn't end right here. You should go buy right. Velo or Sui. You should go into. So, okay, Velo, great buying opportunity, right? Go look at the fundamentals. Go look at the team. Go look at the white paper. Do your due diligence that way. Don't just st start here and go buy one of these cryptos. Because I don't think, Maddie, you said that at any point. You know, it was not like nope. go buy these cryptos. <laughs> he even brought up Mana and Helium out of, you know, showing you guys cryptos that he's looking at here. So that's just some insight for you guys. If you guys like this video, make sure you leave a like and a comment down below. I know I got a little fired up there, but, you know, sometimes it's okay to get fired up and leave. You know, I need some of you guys just need to be checked sometimes, honestly. You just need a little <laughs> check in your life. Uh, Maddie, anything to leave the team with here? Because we won't talk to them until next week. Yeah, sure. You know, as, as always, guys, I know we talk a fair amount about our program. Um, you know, the, the stuff that we do here on the show is really just a little taste of what we have to offer. If you guys use code YouTube, get 50% off any membership. It comes out to 49 bucks a month or 4 dollars for the year. I've done a lot of research, too, into other people that offer, you know, similar services than us. We genuinely have a larger suite of support and genuinely the best price on the market if you guys use our code. Uh, and again, that comes with a 30-day free trial. So that is more than enough time for you guys to check out what we've got to offer, decide if it's for you or not. If it's not for you, no problem. You know what you can do for me is you can give me some feedback. Just let me know what you didn't like about our program so that maybe I can make some changes and, and you know improve things for you guys and uh, you know make something a little bit better for our team as a whole. So you know, check us out. Code YouTube gets you 50% off. Hope to see you in the guys soon. 
All right, team, we better get good feedback for this. This was two long shows this week. Go watch the After Hours show on Monday, and make sure you leave a like and comment down below. Share it with your friends. I don't care. We will see you guys next week. Bye.